Hello everyone, this is Tanya from Professor Tanya Speaks, and today we're going to be talking about how to study less but study smart. Now this is an important topic and I thought it, it needed a bit of discussion because I just finished marking some exam papers and when I spoke to one of the students and I said, what happened? She said, but how could I only get a C and I spent so much time studying? And I said to her, it's not the time that you spend studying, it's what you do and how efficiently you use your time. So what I want to do today is share with you some ideas, some tips on how to study less, but to study smart. And we're going to be looking at Marty Lobdell's ideas because he has a really important video and hope that that would give you some ideas so that you can get better grades going forward. Now, the first tip is that when you're starting to break your study period into chunks, because research does tell us that the brain can absorb 20 to 30 minutes worth of studying. So study for 20 to 30 minutes, take a break, then go again for 20 to 30 minutes, and then take another break. And when you take the break, give yourself a reward. Go on TikTok or Instagram, but five minutes only. Put your timer on so that you don't overdo it. So that's study tip number one, break it into chunks. Study tip number two, when you're studying, make sure that you have a designated area for studying. You don't want to study in your bedroom because the brain associates the bedroom with sleeping. Now, for those of you who will say, but I have nowhere else in my home, my space is crowded, or when I go outside, I get distracted. Okay, fine. If you have to do it in your bedroom, make sure that there's an area in your bedroom that you can dedicate to this. So have a table there, have your little desk, even if you have to sit on the floor, but don't sit on your bed because that will not work for very long. Study tip number three is to study actively. Make sure that you're not just passively reading. I think I spoke about it in this video where I said that there's a difference between active learning and passive learning. If all you're doing is just reading and reading and reading, that's not going to help. But what you want to do is read, engage with the material, think about it, question yourself, see how it applies to different areas of your life, but make sure that it's active engagement. So that's tip number three, study actively. Oh, st Tip number four is to take notes as soon as possible, which means that after you read or after you go to a lecture, sit down, think about it, take notes, fill in the blanks. So that's tip number four. Tip number five, when you have your notes, you want to summarize and you want to try and teach it to someone else. I believe I spoke about this in another video, the Feynman Technique. You want to make sure that you understand the material. And one way to ensure that you understand the material is if you can teach someone. So find someone who doesn't know anything about the material and teach them. Now, when you're preparing to teach them, it will force you to learn and fill in the gaps. And when you teach them and they say and they give you feedback, you will know where other gaps are because if they don't get it, you haven't taught them fully enough. Tip number three, use the SQ4R method. In the video, Marty Lobdell does tell us SQ3R, but it's no longer 3R, it's now 4R. Yeah, times have changed. So use the SQ4R method when you're studying, which means survey, question, read, record, recite, then review. In another video, I will go through those in detail. And tip number seven is use mnemonics. Believe me, it helps. Now, Martin Lobdell talks about three different types of mnemonics. The first one is acronyms. Now, for those of you in my business writing class, you may have heard me talking about fanboys when I'm talking about coordinating conjunctions. That's an example of an acronym. If you want to know which coordinating conjunctions can be used between two simple sentences, then you have a choice between F-A-N-B-O-Y-S. F as in for, A as in an, N as in nor, B as in but, O as in or, Y as in yet, S as in so. 
No, rather than learning all of those words, just say fanboys. So fan acronyms, and that will help you to learn your material. Or another mnemonic can be a kind of saying. So let's say you have a little issue with spelling. There's one of the kind sayings. Well, I learned this one when I was growing up. I before E, except after C. Make your own, and that will help also. Another mnemonic can be image association. And what that means is that you make an image or you use an image to help you to associate the meaning of words or phrases or concepts. So for me, when I was learning communication, I kept mixing up encoding and decoding. I couldn't quite decide which one was in and which one was out. And then I saw this diagram and this diagram helped me a lot. Trust me, it saved me when I was doing exams. So you also can find some images so that those images will help you when you're studying. Okay, so I should have given you a picture of Marty Lobdell's Study Less, Study Smart video. In another video, I will tell you about what his book says also, because he has a few additional tips which are really excellent. But the bottom line is you can do well if you know how to study smart. You do not ever have to study everything. You just have to know what to study, how to study, and that can give you a really great grade, even an A. So until I see you in the next video, bye for now.